When it comes to eating, there are certain rules we need to pay even more attention to after we hit the 50 plus mark. We love sharing with you what we found to work with our clients, and today we're going to be discussing five rules to follow that will absolutely bring you results. If you're looking for more wellness and weight loss advice for women over 50, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a video. So what are these five rules? We refer to them as our five P's of successful healthy eating. And we just wanna say from the get-go, if you want even more tips, we have an amazing guide called 10 Ways to Amp Up Your Energy and Get Your Metabolism Humming Now. So we share some great actionable info in there that we don't have time to share everything here today, so be sure to grab that, which we'll put it in the description below. But today we're gonna to talk about these five rules. Each one is equally important, ladies. So be sure to listen to the end so you don't miss out on any of them. Okay, so you often hear us talk about eating the rainbow. And that means working in tons of colorful plant-based foods to upgrade your health to the next level, right? So the reason behind doing this is not only because there's tons of fiber found in plant-based foods, but something known as polyphenols. So our first P is polyphenols. Okay, what are polyphenols? Polyphenols are a class of compounds found in many, many plant foods, and they include things like flavonoids, phenolic acids, lignans, and many more. And in fact, there's over 8,000 different types of polyphenols that have been identified in our foods so far. There's probably more as we keep investigating. Some of them are more popular than others, like you've probably heard of EGCG that's found in green tea and resveratrol that's found in things like red grapes and yummy red wine. Uh, most polyphenols work as antioxidants. So here's the antioxidant piece. They literally are antioxidants in the body so they can combat environmental harm like UV damage and pollution. And in addition to their antioxidant activity, polyphenols have lots and lots of other health benefits. So studies are suggesting that diets that are really rich in these polyphenols demonstrate anti-inflammatory effects in the body and can offer protection against risk of certain cancers, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even dementia. So this is huge, ladies. We really, really want to be getting these colorful plant foods in also because they feed your gut microbiome. We, we talk, have talked a lot about fiber in foods, feeding your gut microbes, your beneficial bacteria, but the polyphenols are also a food source for these amazing microbes that do everything from decreasing inflammation, helping you absorb your vitamins and minerals, increasing your serotonin in your gut, the list goes on and on. So fiber and polyphenols feed your good gut bugs and this is just paramount. It's why we put it as number one. Where do these plant foods come from? This is where the rainbow comes in. So we've got all your uh, fruits and vegetables that have yellow, green, red, blue, purple, orange. This also includes things like, like colorful spices. Polyphenols are found in different kinds of teas. They're found in uh, black beans, red beans, white beans, uh, red rice, black rice. So anywhere you're gonna see these color, vibrant colors, you're gonna find polyphenols. And don't forget that they're also found in white foods, that counts too. Uh, so cauliflower, turnips, ginger, garlic, etc. So get your polyphenols in. Okay, the second vital P for successful healthy eating and weight loss is pace. The pace at which you eat makes a, such a huge difference in your weight and your overall health. It's often discounted, but slowing down your pace is such a foundational skill, and we are constantly working on this with our clients. And in fact, we need to remind ourselves to do this as well. Why is it so important? Well, when you slow down your pace, you're more likely to eat less. Research suggests that it gives our digestive hormones a chance to communicate with our brains to let our brains know that we are full. And when we eat too fast, we don't give enough time to allow this to happen. When we slow down our eating more, we're more likely and hopefully chewing more. And chewing such is such an important part of the digestive process. So as we age, 
we aren't producing as many digestive enzymes. And we actually see a lot of women with digestive issues, especially after hitting midlife. So these could be all different kinds of digestive issues, but very common for us to see reflux. And actually we have seen many women who recover from reflux just by slowing down their eating. What an amazing concept, right? So when you're chewing more and eating slower, you're gonna digest your food better. Your food will be absorbed more, that your cells will get their nutrients they need better. And overall, you're just gonna have more energy and feel better. And it also helps with your metabolism because you're getting the nutrients you need. It also gives our bodies a chance to get into what we call rest and digest mode. And this is where the digestive process can happen better. When we are more rushed or stressed, we're in what we call more of a fight or flight mode. And that is the state our bodies need if we have an emergency, you gotta rush to the scene or rush to save somebody. But when we're in the fight or flight mode, our digestive system shuts down because we don't wanna be digesting food. We need energy to get to the emergency. So slower eating gives you a chance to get back into that rest or digest. Just taking some deep breaths and slowing down your eating and chewing more, it makes such a big difference. And finally, slower eating gives you a chance to enjoy your food more. How often have you eaten something, just wolfed it down so fast, and then you look at your plate and it's gone, and just like, where did it go? I didn't even taste it. I don't remember how it tastes. But when you slow down and you really taste and savor your food, you're gonna enjoy it more and you'll feel more satisfied. You'll feel like you've actually eaten. And what's interesting is when you start to become aware of this, uh, you'll notice people around you, how fast they eat. Uh, sometimes I have to tell some family members, hey, take a deep breath, slow down, because it's I'm feeling the stress and it makes me want to eat a little bit faster. So I have to keep reminding myself, slow down, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. But it's just really important. Do not discount the impact that the pace can have on your healthy eating plan. All right, let's move on to the third P. It's protein. As we age, our protein needs increase. During menopause, the natural decline in estrogen causes a loss of muscle mass and strength. And a good dose of protein has been shown to help prevent the muscle loss that occurs with aging. So if you don't get enough protein, your body's gonna break down its own muscle tissue, making matters even worse. Protein also has been shown to boost weight loss and maintain long-term steady blood sugar control. And you really want that because if your blood sugar starts spiking, then you have cravings and it just can mess up your whole eating plan. So that's really another reason to get more protein in. So aim for 20 to 25 grams per meal. Sourcing is really key. So look for a variety of sources from foods such as pastured chicken, turkey, eggs, 100% grass fed beef, or look at more plant-based sources such as beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, or even a good protein powder. So remember, P number three is get more protein. Are we ready for our fourth P, which is pare down sugar and processed food? Okay, this one is pretty obvious and we can imagine you've heard this a million times before, but we still can't ignore how important it is to be rooting out all the excess sugar and cutting way back on processed foods. So these two culprits, they just make it so much harder to lose or control your weight. They also increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, and many other chronic diseases. And several studies have found that chemicals in processed foods can promote early insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And these are things that are more important than ever to be paying attention to as we enter into our midlife years and, of course, beyond. So processed foods are made for convenience and long shelf life. And unfortunately, that's where real nutrition gets shortchanged in these methods and chemicals that are used to create these foods. And when we ingest too many of these chemicals, it really puts a drain on our metabolism because our bodies don't know how to process them. They're found in foods like chips and cookies and breakfast cereals, microwave meals, most breads, sugary drinks and cheeses. As far as sugar, we have our obvious culprits there, the sweets like cakes and cookies and candy and ice cream. But you have to be a little bit of a sleuth to root out where the hidden sources are, like in yogurts and cereals and granola bars and ketchup. 
So you want to be looking at the labels and search for different ways sugar is listed, like fructose, high fructose corn syrup, glucose, and dextrose, even honey, maple syrup, which are more natural sugars. Sometimes they just sneak them in in different ways in way more amounts than you uh, would might suspect. So you want to put anything back on the shelf that has more than four grams of sugar per serving, which is equal to a teaspoon. And you really want to kind of keep your diet to no more than about four or five added teaspoons of sugar a day. It adds up very quickly. So be sure to pay attention to labels and read the added sugar grams. Also, we just want to mention that you want to watch out for something we call the health halo. So this includes a lot of yogurts and granola bars and granolas and things that sort of have a healthy sound and say, oh, that might sound good, or sort of these coconut ice creams or sorbets, which have not a lot of fat, they could still be loaded with sugar. So turn the label over, read it, look to see how many grams of sugar are in a serving and just keep your eye on that because anything over four to five teaspoons of added sugar a day can start creating some of these chronic issues that we were just talking about. So that's number four, pare down sugar and processed foods. All right, so let's wrap this up with our last P, and that is to do a plate makeover. What's a plate makeover? <laughs> so how do you create that? Let's start with, first off, use smaller plates. Jane and I have switched to smaller plates and it's made a big difference and we have a lot of our clients doing that as well. So of course it's awesome and vital and important to eat good, healthy, clean foods, but even with healthy food, it's possible and quite common to get too much of a good thing to overeat. So adjusting your plate size can make a big difference in portion control. Plate sizes have grown so much over the years uh, if you look at a plate from, say, the 50s compared to a plate now, it's, it's a huge difference. But we found that when you use a smaller plate, you just tend to eat less. So you can go fill your small plate and it actually gives the illusion that you're eating more because it fills up the plate. So give this a try and then if you feel after you eat the plate, well, you don't eat the plate, but the food on the plate, then yet you still want more, you can go back and get a little bit more, but overall you will be eating less food. And the other part of the plate makeover is about what goes on the plate. So it's very common to have the protein take up the largest part of the plate, along with the starch and then maybe a side of veggies. But we suggest taking non-starchy veggies and filling up half the plate with them. So make these non-starchy veggies the superstars and then add your protein, so if you're having chicken or fish, you, again, to get the 20, 25 grams, as we mentioned earlier, it would be about a, the size of a deck of cards for a visual there. And then you can add a starch or a starchier veggie like sweet potatoes or carrots or peas in the remaining part of the plate. We go into this in a lot more detail in our PM Meal Mastery Program, where we help take the guesswork out of what to eat and support your body, brains, and bones and of course metabolism during these years of change without spending hours in the kitchen or feeling deprived, hungry, or cranky. So we'll put the link below and you can check that out. So there you have it, our five Ps, which represent our five rules of healthy eating. Let us know in the comments below which of these you're currently already doing and also which one you're gonna work on. And be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of future content. And also, check out our next video for even more support on managing weight and health after 50.